Coming up in today's show... Knowledge plays a crucial role in the development of society. And the community of Rocky Valley in West Rural St. Andrews experiencing that firsthand. Plus, answers to questions as the Joint Select Committee consults on the drafting of the National Identification System Needs Bill. Hello there, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Welcome to our Thursday edition of Jamaica Magazine. There's more, so stay with us. Good day, I'm Theodore Henry, and this is your GIS News for Thursday, February 11, 2021. The Mandeville Regional Hospital is currently reorganizing its workflows and implementing a surge plan after 34 staff members tested positive for the novel coronavirus in recent days. The hospital has 780 staff members, and since March 2020, 61 have contracted the virus, of which 27 have fully recovered and are back at work. Two microbiologists and a public health team are currently investigating the circumstances under which 27 members of the operating theater and high dependency unit HDU teams contracted the virus. Hospital CEO Alwyn Miller says investigations revealed that 10 of the active cases are likely to have been contracted outside of the hospital. He says sanitizing of the operating theater is guided by the highest established standards done after each case and again at the end of each day. Regional Director of the Southern Regional Health Authority, Sarah Michael Bent, is also reporting that the Mandeville Regional Hospital's COVID-19 20-bed isolation ward is at full capacity. But, he says, the authority had anticipated the challenges of the pandemic and developed a surge plan early in 2020 for the region, which includes Manchester, Clarendon and St. Elizabeth. This surge plan involves the identification of additional beds on an off-site. That includes repurposing an additional ward to serve as a 16-bed isolation ward and redistributing patients who can be managed at other hospitals in the region. In addition, there is a 30-bed facility at the Kendall Camp and Conference Centre in Manchester and a 12-bed facility at Font Hill, St. Elizabeth, for recovering patients who do not need hospitalization. Sarah's regional director is assuring the public that while Mandeville Regional is stretched, it is not broken, adding that they continue to serve the public in the best way possible in all areas of healthcare. Meanwhile, Jamaica has now surpassed 18,000 total COVID-19 cases since the virus entered the island in March of last year. 329 of the cases came in the last 24 hours, one of them imported. Almost a third of the new cases were recorded in Kingston and St. Andrew, with St. James, St. Catherine, Manchester and St. Anne recording the next highest numbers. Over the last 24 hours, a 61-year-old male from Westmoreland also died from the virus, and the Ministry of Health is also reporting one coincidental death. 363 Jamaicans have died from COVID-19 since the start of the pandemic. 12,456 persons have recovered. They include 198 people in hospital, 26 of them moderately ill, and 18 critically ill. Jamaicans are being reminded to observe the protocols to reduce the spread of COVID-19, including wearing a mask in public spaces, keeping a distance of six feet from others, and frequent hand washing and sanitizing. Government is drafting a beach access and management policy for Jamaica to increase access and improve the standard and maintenance of beaches available to the public. Environment and Climate Change Minister Pernell Charles Jr. says the policy is one element of government's move toward the introduction of more sustainable practices aimed at developing a more resilient Jamaica. Policy looks also on that balance. Access, how we are taking care of our beaches, um, how we are going to be able to provide um, beaches that people can feel safe and secure in, and amenities, uh, sanitization and clean beaches, spaces where Jamaicans and our tourists alike can have an opportunity to enjoy. Minister Charles Jr. was speaking at a recent virtual public town hall meeting. 
He says the policy development process has included consultations with government stakeholders, civil society and the Jamaica Hotel and Tourist Association, as well as private sector entities. The public is being invited to make comments and provide recommendations on the beach access and management policy for Jamaica. Written suggestions may be sent to policy comments at megjc.gov.jm. Government is aiming to expand a program for the separation of plastics at source following its successful implementation in 18 Kingston metropolitan area communities. The program is being done through collaboration between the National Solid Waste Management Authority and the Jamaica Social Investment Fund. Minister of Environment and Climate Change Pernell Charles Jr. says it is part of efforts to minimize plastic waste and ultimately improve the country's environmental and human health. Jamaicans should, Madam Speaker, be able to enjoy our recreational spaces, including our beaches, our rivers, without encountering piles of single-use plastic waste or consuming microplastics in food and drinking water. In Jamaica, single-use plastics are often improperly disposed of. They contribute to flooding and they pose a serious risk to the health of our marine ecosystems, biodiversity and potentially human health. Minister Charles Jr. was speaking in Parliament on Tuesday. He took the opportunity to laud Raytown community members for their participation in the Plastic Waste Minimization Project, which was designed to reduce the flow of plastic waste from gullies into the Kingston Harbour. Public officials required to file statutory declarations can now submit these within their organizations. Manager of the Declarations Unit in the Information and Complaints Division at the Integrity Commission, Joeth Jones-Hall, made this disclosure recently during an interview on GIS's Get the Facts program. She says the Commission has taken steps to decentralize the collection in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. This year, we are strongly encouraging all declarants not to come to the Commission's office, but they can, also, they can now securely submit their statutory declarations at their own organization. Among persons required to file statutory declarations are all parliamentarians, members of the security forces, and public officials in receipt of total emoluments, $3.5 million and above. It also applies to persons required by notice published in the Jamaica Gazette or requested in writing by the Commission. The deadline for submitting the declarations this year is March 31. Police officers can submit their statutory declaration to any of their five divisional headquarters, while Jamaica Defence Force officers do so at their respective unit headquarters. Other public officers can submit at established collection points within their ministry, department and agency. Declarants will be given an envelope, be given seals. There are secured containers located at your organizations. So declarants may submit these documents securely at their organization. Declarations will be delivered by each entity or collected by the Integrity Commission at the end of the collection period and a receipt sent to the declarants electronically. And finally, a 12-year-old student's cry for help has been answered by the Minister of Education, Youth and Information, Favor Williams. Minister Williams says that after reading young Avatar Machette's heartbreaking story in the media, she was prompted to act quickly, gifting him with school books and a tablet. I know that across Jamaica, there, there are many such stories of, of persons who, for you know, whatever reason, they're not able to move forward in the way they want in terms of their educational dreams. We have to intervene um, to ensure that you, your future doesn't get stunted just because you didn't have the textbooks or you didn't have a device. Avatar scored an overall average of 83.2% in the primary exit profile PEP last year, which earned him a place at Clarendon College. The tablet he received was taken from the National Education Trust NET shipment received from the New York Consulate. He also received phone credit from Unicycle Jamaica, which was donated to the NET. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching. What 
is the National Identification System. The new National ID will for the first time give Jamaicans one ID that is trusted and verifiable. This means easier access to government services like PATH and NIS. It will be easier to do business with the government and the private sector. Eventually, there will be no need to walk with more than one ID. Support the new National ID. Get the facts at nidsfacts.com or on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at nidsfacts. As we've come to embrace a digital society, resources are needed to connect us to the platforms. Through partnership, residents in West Rural St. Andrew now have improved access to information through the establishment of a resource room at the Rocky Valley Community Center in Stony Hill. The facility was refurbished at a cost of $5 million. Step inside and see for yourself. Today, we not only celebrate the opening of a new facility, but the impact we envisage it will have on the residents. At a cost of $5.1 million, this resource center was brought to its refined state and is now retrofitted with computers and a printer. This brings me great joy, as students will be able to join their school sessions online and respond to the various demands that come with learning. To the people of Stony Hill, this is for you. This is for your children, especially in this time when children need access online. And I hope you take good care of it and use it in the proper way. I recognize many families still may not have a device and we are still working. The government is working to make sure that our children are equipped with devices. But if you don't, there are 11 computers here to support you and I'm urging the principal to make use of that. With the COVID-19 pandemic at hand, this could not have come at a better time. If you look at the records, it will show that, well, I know from my records, that over 70% of our students since March last year have not been accessing online platforms for classes. With a resource center like this being open this morning, of course, it will open the way for many students in the Stone Hill community to do the same. So I am sure that 70% will be reduced drastically. Universal Service Fund as a partner came on board and we did what was necessary to make sure that the people of Stony Hill now more than ever have access to the internet superhighway. There are more Wi-Fi hotspots coming to West Rural St. Andrew. And yes, I did put it in. Lawrence Tavern will have such. Red Hill Center will have such. And of course, here in Rocky Valley, you have this um, center here to access your Wi-Fi connection. This project could be more timely because our children needed ways to get onto the classes, the Zoom classes, the log on this, the Google search. You have the opportunity now, you have no more excuses why you can't be online on a class. Everyone with the password Rocky Valley Hotspot at 123, get ready. Google, Snapchat, Twitter, Google Class, everything is at your doorstep. We are a country that wants to ensure that we are knowledge based and we have brought it to your doorsteps. Enjoy.
The new NIDS bill has been drafted and is ready for review. We want to hear from you. Go to www.japarliament.gov.jm to download a copy of the new bill. Join the conversation. Make a written submission to Clark to the Houses, Gordon House, 81 Duke Street, Kingston, or via email clark at japarliament.gov.jm. We have extended the time to the 15th of February. Join the process. Let your voice be heard. Up next, we'll spend a few minutes answering questions that will help to guide the drafting of the National Identification System NIDS Bill. Not by me, but members of the NIDS Secretariat. These virtual town hall meetings have responded to a number of issues and questions that have been put to the Joint Select Committee and also to the technical team of the NIDS Secretariat. I would like to inform you that we have had several written submissions and comments which will be addressed when the sittings of the Joint Select Committee return to the Parliament and I can inform you that the first sitting will be on the 11th of February when we will start to examine the written contributions that have been made to the Parliament and these will be addressed from the 11th and continue in February and depending on how many contributions we receive into March. So we have a question here from social media again. Isn't it true to say that with the removal of NIDS being mandatory, it is basically toothless? Once we enter the system, admittedly a voluntary system, once citizens of Jamaica feel that it is beneficial to have the card, then I strongly believe that the turnout will be in the 90, perhaps close to 99%, because the fact that it is easier to access the services of PICA, TAJ, the private sector, generally to get into the educational system, and so many benefits that without the card, the obstacle is not as is difficult, then I hope that without the mandatory nature of this card, the vast majority of Jamaicans will register and get a card. Another question coming in on Facebook um, from Sarah Buckland, and she's asking, since NIDS is voluntary now, um, is there a provision in the bill to prevent any public and private institution from having their own mandate with the NIDS card? Well, when you put it that way, it may be that, um, let us say, I don't think that, peak, uh, that government agencies are going to insist that it is mandatory. But what PICA or TAJ or private institution or the banks might say, without the NIDS card, I can't give you service. You can't stop a private sector from exercising that freedom of choice. The, uh, a bank might say, I don't trust any other identification but the NIDS card, and that is their right. It might be difficult for a government agency to do that because of the Charter of Rights, but that doesn't stop a private agency from saying, I need the NIDS card. Okay, another question. I would have observed on the current card that height and complexion of many citizens are incorrect. Um, how will NIDS address this in going forward in terms of accuracy of data on the card? Well, let us start with the height first. Um, all of our enrollment um, sites will be equipped with the relevant tools to verify height. As it relates to um, complexion, um, we have no system or protocols in place with the complexion. Whatever color you appear before the enrollment officer with, that is what will be captured by the camera and on the system. Uh, naturally, however, 
the, the ability to check a face, um, your complexion is not considered significantly. It's about you know, the shape of the face and we have the, the alternate biometric or fingerprint to use. And that is why we are using uh, facial and fingerprint because we know um, you, you may experience changes there. All right, a question to the NITS team here from Shirley Richards on YouTube. Can someone with dual nationality be on the board or inspectorate? I think the simple answer though to that question is that dual citizens, citizens with dual nationality are not excluded. It's unlike what is happening to members of parliament. If you, are, if you have dual citizenship, you cannot become a member of parliament. But I don't think that so far, at any rate, that um, being a member of the inspectorate or being a member of the NERA exclude persons with dual nationality. If an enrolled member is aggrieved by the NIDS Act, what is the process of recourse or for recourse? individual is aggrieved at any decision of the of the authority in respect of their identity information that person can all can always file an appeal file a notice of appeal within 28 days after receiving that communication once they have filed the notice it should be accompanied by copies of supporting documents and served on the authority and the inspectorate Within seven days of receiving the notice of, of appeal, the authority shall prepare a, a written statement with their reasons for their decision and provide this to the, the appeal tribunal. The appeal tribunal shall then inform the parties to provide them with the relevant information as necessary and also to inform them of the date of the hearing of the appeal and that they may be they, that they may be they may appear in person or send a representative on their behalf and as well summon a witness to 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 go to 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 represent them as well the new nits bill has been drafted and is ready for review we want to hear from you go to www.japarliament.gov.jm to download a copy of the new bill join the conversation make a written submission to clark to the houses gordon house 81 duke street kingston or via email clark at japarliament.gov.jm we have extended the time to the 15th of february join the process let your voice be heard As the country continues to take actions to mitigate the spread of the coronavirus, we want to remind you of its effect on our health. Viruses are a large family of viruses found in both animals and humans. Some infect people and are known to cause illness ranging from the common cold to more severe diseases such as Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, MERS, and Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, SARS. Research reveals that SARS-CoV was transmitted from civet cats to humans in China in 2002 and MERS-CoV from dromedary camels to humans in Saudi Arabia in 2012. A novel coronavirus, novel meaning new strain of the coronavirus not previously identified in humans, was identified after an outbreak was reported in Wuhan, China in December 2019. It has subsequently spread to a number of other countries through human-to-human -human contact, and the World Health Organization has since officially named it COVID-19. The incubation period for viruses is the time between infection and the start of clinical symptoms of the disease. Based on information from other coronavirus diseases, such as MERS and SARS, the incubation period of the 2019 novel coronavirus, or COVID-19, is determined to be up to 14 days. As with other respiratory illnesses, this disease can cause mild symptoms, including a runny nose, sore throat, cough, and fever. 
For coronavirus generally, the person is most infectious when displaying symptoms. It is difficult to identify COVID-19 based on symptoms alone, as they are typically the same as infections of the flu or cold. A laboratory test is therefore needed to confirm if someone has the coronavirus. The infection can be more severe for some persons and can lead to pneumonia or breathing difficulties. More rarely, the disease can be fatal. Older persons and people with pre-existing medical conditions such as asthma, diabetes and heart disease are deemed more vulnerable to becoming severely ill with the virus. The new coronavirus spreads primarily through contact with an infected person. It spread through respiratory droplets generated when a person coughs or sneezes or through droplets of saliva or discharge from the nose. To prevent spread, it's important that everyone practice good respiratory hygiene. It's a similar respiratory precaution as we would take for influenza. <coughs> for example, sneeze or cough into a flexed elbow or use a tissue and discard it immediately into a closed bin. Washing your hands frequently with soap and water or using an alcohol-based hand sanitizer eliminates the virus if it is on your hands. Washing of hands is very, very important because any kind of droplets that get on your hand, you can transfer to your face and you can therefore get it into your ear passages or into the eyes and cause an infection. When someone who is infected with a respiratory disease like COVID-19 coughs or sneezes, that person projects small droplets containing the virus. If you are too close, you can breathe in the virus. The general precautions in terms of making sure that you keep your distance, three feet is what we recommend. Keeping this distance between yourself and other people, particularly those who are coughing, sneezing and have a fever, helps to prevent those persons who don't have the virus from getting it. If you are sick, to stay away from other persons, that means not going to work or school. Someone who is coughing and sneezing should wear an approved mask where necessary. Wearing a mask is only for the sick or for medical persons who are doing a procedure. Actually, if you go ahead and wear a mask, you might be the one who would get the infection. Because they put on a mask and you see it happening. They put it on, they start sweating. They start playing around with the mask. It's getting moist. It allows the infection to get in easier. So you are actually exposing yourself. And so we have to be very careful how we use masks and other um, protective equipment. Data collected by the WHO so far suggests that the coronavirus may survive a few hours on surfaces and applying disinfectants to surfaces can kill the virus, making it no longer possible to infect people in this way. To avoid getting infected, do not touch your eyes, nose or mouth after touching any surface. Inform healthcare providers of any overseas travel in the 14 days before your symptoms developed or if you've been in close contact with someone who has been sick with respiratory symptoms. To date, there's no specific medicine recommended to prevent or treat the new coronavirus or COVID-19. But persons infected with the virus should receive appropriate care to relieve and treat symptoms, and those with severe illness should receive optimized supportive care. Remember, practice good respiratory and hand hygiene. This is where our journey ends, but only for today. Do join us again tomorrow when we'll bring you another informative program. In the meantime, stay connected via our website, jis.gov.jm. And while you're online, send your feedback to Jamaica Magazine at jis.gov.jm or via tweet at JIS News. You may also find us on all the major social media platforms and through our mobile app that's Android and iOS compatible. On behalf of the entire production crew, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Do take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.